Hello and welcome to this video. Let's continue with the different types of environmental pollution and today we'll be talking about noise pollution. Now noise is a word that is derived from nausea and we all know how discomforting, how unpleasant we can feel when we are nauseatic. Noise too is one such sound that is unwanted or unpleasant and it can even disrupt the activity of living beings. Noise pollution refers to the environmental noise which gets annoying, which is distracting and which is physically harmful. That is what we refer to as noise pollution. In fact, the intensity of noise is measured as decibel units. That is a ratio in log scale relative to a reference sound pressure level. That is what we mean as decibel unit. And decibel unit between 65 to 80 decibels is tolerable. It's tolerable for the human ear and we don't call it as noise pollution. But anything that is greater than 80 decibels is what starts causing stress to the human ear and that is when we refer it to as noise pollution. In fact, the sensitivity of the ear gets lost if the sound intensity is very high, more than say 150 decibels, even the sensitivity can be lost. One thing to remember about this type of pollution is that as we move away from the source of the noise, as the distance you know, increases from the particular noise source, its effect also keeps going lower and lower. So the decibel level reduces and when the decibel level reduces automatically, the effect on our human ear also reduces. That is one thing we need to keep in mind when we talk about the control measures of noise pollution. So as with all the other pollution types, we will be looking at the common causes what effects it can have on the environment and on the human health and then we'll be looking at some easy control measures. So when we see the causes of noise pollution, the, the first thing that comes to our mind when we look at a city or when we look at a metropolitan area, even in certain rural areas when we, you know, not very rural but partially rural areas or a small town when we look at the one major cause of noise pollution is transportation. It can include rail traffic as well. It can include the aircrafts when they take off, when they land. All of that is a major source. Transportation as such is a major cause of noise pollution. The second reason for noise pollution is the industries. That is the industrial machinery, the equipment, the operation of the equipment, the any kind of movement of the equipment from one place to the other, all of that, any kind of industrial activity for that matter, is a source of noise pollution. In fact, that is one of the reasons why there is a strict ban on establishing industries in residential areas. We know about it. We know that industries cannot be huge industries. There are a particular type of industries. So you can't set up industries which have heavy equipment or heavy machinery in, industri in residential areas. The reason being, one of the reasons is the noise pollution that it causes. The third reason is or the third cause of noise pollution is construction activity. In fact, poor urban planning, any kind of continuous construction activity that we see in and around our cities is also a major cause of noise pollution. Entertainment systems, audio entertainment systems which are there, which like a concert or if there are public announcement systems which are continuously blaring throughout the day, all of that also adds on to the noise pollution. And finally, the use of firecrackers. This is a major problem, especially in India during the festivals like Diwali where or even in some cases, even during the new year, a lot of firecrackers are burst and that causes severe health effects, not only in human beings, but also in animals. We look at the effects right away. So the effects can be grouped as those which are causing some harm to the human health and those which are affecting the environment. So let's see what these effects are. In the human health, again, you can divide the effects as being auditory or behavioral effects or cardiovascular effects. Now, auditory effects are those which are affecting our hearing when it causes hearing loss or, you know, when there is chronic exposure, it can even lead to deafness in the person. So those are the auditory effects. Behavioral effects result are refers or it refers to the, you know, the coordination of limbs gets lost. There is ill temper. There is a sleep disorder, mental disorientation. In fact, in pregnant women, they are especially vulnerable to very high noise levels. So it causes uh, auditory fatigue in the children. It causes depression and, you know, fatigue in even in adults uh, being exposed to a high intensity noise for a very long period of time is known to cause depression and fatigue. So these are some of the behavioral changes that are seen or the behavioral effects that are seen when people are exposed to high noise levels or in other words noise pollution. There can also be cardiovascular effects. This is very very 
you know it has been proven by very many number of studies that there is an increase in the blood pressure there is reduced heartbeat there is a lot of breathing problems that are associated with chronic exposure or long term exposure to high noise levels we also see a lot of effects on the environment now here when we see when we say environment we are mainly talking about the animals the biodiversity that is there in the environment animals are also affected by high noise levels on a long for a long period of time we have been noting a lot of behavioral changes that are there in the birds in the animals that are living in the cities in comparison to their rural counterparts there's also their feeding behavior gets affected because they now are inefficient in hunting because of which you know when they cannot hunt and feed themselves it upsets or disturbs the balance of the ecosystem it also is known to affect their breeding rituals a lot of mating rituals are based on you know the noise perception by the other partner and due to the noise pollution the partners are unable to perceive the the sound signals the mating signals and that has been known to affect their breeding behavior as well additionally migration paths of various birds have been affected due to the noise levels in cities so these are some of the effects on animals in turn the biodiversity and the environment so when we see the control measures control measures are fairly easy the first and major control measure is to spread public awareness example banning the fire crackers during diwali that is something that many of the city administration have employed this year and from the last few years they have been you know bringing into place they have either placed a complete ban or they have placed a ban throughout the day and they have given certain time slots when you can burn crackers all of that is to make sure that the public is aware about the increasing noise levels and the pollution and its effects what happens when you have loud noise over a long period of time what effects it can have on the humans and the animals so public awareness is something that is very very important secondly we can have certain noise barriers which can be installed especially to reduce the roadway noise so roadway noise the road traffic is the most widespread cause of noise pollution worldwide we can install a lot of noise barriers we can limit the vehicle speed on certain roads we can come up with certain innovative design types or uh, you know ensure that there is regular servicing and tuning of the automobiles so all of these noise barriers and the uh, making sure that all the laws are being followed the vehicles the automobiles are being regularly serviced can ensure that the transportation noise can be reduced to quite an extent not only that having redesigning the equipment that is there redesigning the industrial equipment shock mounting assemblies can be used in more of the equipments to ensure that the red, noise levels are reduced regulation of pa systems can be done especially in case of you know loud speaker pa systems or microphones there can be control and regulation you can't completely stop it but you can regulate the timing you can regulate the level to which it is how loud it is that can be regulated acoustic lining can be used this is basically a sound absorptive material that is in use nowadays in many of the construction materials in pipes in ducts in rooms it can be used so that it decreases the noise that is getting inside the room we can also ensure that people who are working especially the workers who are you know in the industries in and around a lot of noise areas for example mining you can ensure that the people are using self protection they are using ear muffs they are using ear plugs so that the noise levels can be cut down we also have had a lot of you know like i said the equipment redesign in many ways we have even come up with quieter jet engines so aircrafts used to create a lot of noise earlier like in 1970s and 1980s but then the equipment was redesigned their entire engine was redesigned and we have been able to come up with reduced noise levels being generated during the transportation so these are some of the causes the effects and the easy control measures towards noise noise pollution i was useful to all of you and i do hope to see you all in my next video on nuclear hazards and the human health risks that they pose thank you